Welcome back to More Sip the Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to take a look at our number three team. And just like the number five team, we have a tie. We have two teams for the number three spot, so we'll take a look at our first number three team today, and that is the Miami Dolphins. And we'll start it off with their quarterback room, and that starts with Tua Tungabailoa. Tua Tungabailoa last year had a career year through for 4,624 yards, 29 touchdowns, uh, 14 interceptions. And before I even get into it, that's amazing to see him come back and have those type of numbers after what we saw the year before. That was so scary, and for him to come back and put up numbers like he did last year, I commend him for, for doing that because the end of 2022 was was very, very scary for, for Tua Tonga Valoa. Also in that room, uh, Mike White, who didn't play much because Tua played pretty much the whole year, five for six, uh, 74 yards and touchdown, and they also had Skylar Thompson, who didn't play at all, but that's their quarterback room. Now going to their running back room, which was um, really, really good last year. <laughs> Uh, starting off with Raheem Mostert, he had 1,012 yards on 209 carries. Also had 18 touchdowns, caught the ball for 175 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, they drafted Devon A-Chain from Texas A&M. He came in and had an amazing uh, rookie season. Only played 11 games. Uh, they had 800 yards, eight touchdowns, 27 catches, uh, 197 yards, and three touchdowns. So between those two guys, they had uh, 1,800 yards and 26 touchdowns, which is crazy because they're probably two of the fastest dudes in the, the uh, NFL. They also drafted Jalen Wright, so he'll be their third running back. So in that room, they got basically a the makings of a 4 by one track team in that room so far. The other part of that 4 by one track team is at the wide receiver position. One of the best wide receivers in the League right now, one of the highest paid, probably the most feared wide receiver in NFL, Tyreek Hill. 1,799 yards on 119 catches last year. Like I said, probably the most feared receiver in the NFL right now because he can, if he gets his hands on the ball, it's a potential touchdown no matter where he catches it. Flat, deep, short, curl, pitch it, toss it to him. It's a potential touchdown if Tyreek touches it. Also, Jalen Waddle. He also had 1,000 yards, 1,014 yards, and four touchdowns. Uh, Tyreek is the second highest paid receiver, if I'm not mistaken. And then Jalen Waddle was like the fifth or sixth. So they, a lot of their cap space is tied into the wide receiver room. They brought in Odell Beckham. He had 35 catches, 565 yards from Baltimore last year. Braxton Berrios, who's still on the team, had 238 yards. And they drafted Malik Washington out of Virginia to add to that room. He's going to be a Different type of receiver for them. He'll be more like a possession yak type dude. He'll be the guy that you can throw the bubble screens to and he can go get you 25 yards off of those because he can make people miss and fight for those dirty yards and you can kind of keep Tyreek and Jalen out and let them do their work down the field. Let's go to the tight end room. Uh, brought in John Lewis Smith from Atlanta. He had 50 catches, 582 yards last year, three touchdowns. Um, and Durham Smythe had 35 catches for 10 and a half yards per catch. Also at Julian Hill in that room also. So it's a pretty formidable tight end room. But Janu is really a special talent. Janu is, he can be a tight end, like inline blocking. You can flex him out and do some stuff with him. You can use him as an H-back, like a move, uh, fullback type deal. And in all the movement that Mike McDonald does, I look for for him to use Janu in some crazy, crazy ways. And there's a lot of talent on this Offensive side of the ball. And to go with that mind of Mike McDonald, they're going to do some really, really crazy stuff in Miami this year. Talk about that O-line. In that O-line room, Taron Olmstead, 79-3. Isaiah Wynn, 47-8. Aaron Brewer, 71-6. Robert Jones, 57-6. And Austin Jackson, 66-9. Um, Terion has been a guy for a long time. The rest of those guys, they have work to do up front. Um... I, I think this is where they'll start to invest their capital from this year going forward. Maybe they're addressing a trade at the trade deadline this year or in the draft in the upcoming years. But the only real weakness on this offense is the O-line to me. But let's move on. Let's pop on over to the defensive side, um, which is the side that's really got me puzzled right now, mainly because of injury. But let's start with 
the, the defensive line. They they try to be a three four team. So let's talk about the guys up front. Zach Siegler is back last year, ten sacks, sixty three tackles. They brought in Neville Gallimore from Dallas. Didn't have a lot of production last year. 16 tackles, one sack. They brought in the ageless one, Calais Campbell. He was 37. Last year in Atlanta had six and a half sacks, 56 tackles, uh, one pass defended, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery. And when I was doing the research for this, knowing how old Calais Campbell is, at 37 in Atlanta, he had a better season than the three seasons prior he had in Baltimore. And, you you know, Baltimore probably had the better defense, but individually, Calais Campbell had a better season last year than any of those seasons he had in Baltimore. But on the edges for Miami, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Both of these guys are hurt right now. Both of them are expected to play. So I'm going to talk about them briefly, but I also got to do something I hadn't done. I got to mention their backups because, again, both of these guys are hurt. So you got Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb. Jalen Phillips had six and a half sacks before he got hurt. Bradley Chubb had 11. But those two guys on the opposite sides were really a force to deal with. And then they had Van Ginkle, who's no longer on the team. So they really had some guys that could get, up, get after it off the edge. But replacing those guys is Chop Robinson, who's a rookie from Penn State, and Shaquille Barrett. Those are the two guys that got to come in and play for them. So the two guys that are hurt plus these two backup guys really factored into my decision for this ranking in this room. Let's talk about the linebacker part of it. Anthony Walker Jr. and Jordan Brooks. Anthony Walker Jr. came in from Cleveland, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 44 tackles. And then Jordan Brooks came over from Seattle last year. Jordan Brooks and um, uh, the Mike linebacker for Miami last year, they basically just swapped teams. I can't think of his name right now. But they basically just swapped teams. So now Jordan Brooks is in Miami. 111 tackles, four and a half sacks, eight TFLs, four passes defended. Jordan Brooks is probably one of the faster, if not the fastest linebacker in the league right now. Uh, he just has to harness some of that speed and be more disciplined, which is one of the reasons why I think he's not in Seattle anymore. Let's go to their cornerback room. Cornerbacks. One of the best to ever do it. Been doing it for a long time. That's Jalen Ramsey. Uh, 22 tackles last year. Five passes defended, three interceptions. Just when you think that, you know, he's falling off, he'll jump back up and do something spectacular. Um, with Anthony Weaver being the new D.C., um, it'll be interesting to see how they employ Jalen Ramsey because he don't just have to be an outside corner. He's so athletic, he can be outside, he can be slot. Uh, and I can see Jalen transitioning to safety, you know, soon because he, he'll be 30 soon. I can see him transitioning to safety for the second half of his career and, and be real good at it. Uh, Kendall Fuller they brought in from Washington last year, 79 tackles, two interceptions, uh, nine passes defended. And Kader Kohu will be that nickel back. He had 10 passes defended with no interceptions last year and 63 tackles. That's that cornerback room. And moving over to safety, they got Javon Holland, who's one of the, the, the young up-and-coming safeties in the league. 74 tackles last year, four passes defended, one interception. And they brought in the old vet, um, Jordan Poy. Finally messing up the light-skinned brothers with Micah Hyde up there in Buffalo. I ain't going to use that joke I had. But uh, Javon Holland and Jordan Poy is a good safety room. Combined, uh, Jordan Poirier had 100 tackles last year, four pass defended also, but didn't have an interception. So, you know, their defense, the secondary straight, linebackers, they got to work together. Both of them are new. Their edge is where the issue is because their two best edges are hurt, so they got to rely on an older guy and a rookie to get, get in there and make some noise. And um, Khalid Campbell is... Oh, <laughs> but let's look at each uh, position room ranking and see what we have them so we can go from there. Uh, their quarterback room, I have 15. Running back room, first. Wide receiver room, first. Tight ends, 27. O-line, 14. Defensive line, edge, 13. And that's factoring in two guys that's going to come back plus them two rookies. Well, not two rookies, the two new players. Um, linebackers, 15. Cornerbacks, 10. And safeties, 10. Add them all together at the bottom, you get 11.7778. And that is our first, well, actually, it's a tie for number three. So that's our first number three team. Um, we're going to do the second one tomorrow. 
Let's take a look at the Dolphins draft picks and see how they fit into the team. Now let's talk about their draft choices. So Chop Robinson, they drafted, you know, first. He'll probably be in the rotation with, with those guys up front, especially with the two main guys being hurt. So he'll get a chance to play early and often. Patrick Paul could get into this offensive line. Um, if he moves in the guard, he definitely could, could get in and play some offensive line with um, Robert Jones and Isaiah Wynn getting that competition. Uh, Jalen Wright, we talked about, is going to be the third running back. We talked about him earlier. Mohamed Kamara from Colorado State could definitely be in the rotation with Chop Robinson. So you got two rookies that will be in that, that edge rotation until your veterans come back. Malik Washington, a wide receiver from Virginia that I mentioned earlier, that's a, a big-time yak guy, throwing some screens, throwing some drag routes, and he can make the, the rest happen. Patrick McMorris, a DB from California. It's going to be tough to get in that rotation unless somebody gets hurt. And then Taj Washington, a wide receiver from USC. Uh, just a, an extra guy to put in that room, but it's going to be hard for him to crack that wide receiver rotation because they got some dudes up there. And that is your Miami Dolphins, the first number three team on the More Sip to Tally Countdown, we'll be here tomorrow with the second one. And uh, if you have not liked the video, please do so. Hit the subscribe button if you like the content, and hit the bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. We're almost there. we almost there. We got our second number three team. Then we got number two. Then we got number one. Close. We're almost there. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Peace.